There's a good one. That's a nice fish. You ready? Yeah. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's pretty heavy. I don't know. Let's say you missed him. Dude, how in the f <laughs> did I miss that thing? Welcome back to Outdoors America, Ice Fishing Edition. This week, we're still on some of the little lakes in Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota does not look like Minnesota as of late. It's been really warm and we don't have much ice on any lakes. So even the one, even the one we're on has very little ice on, uh, but it's small enough that, that we, can, we can actually get out, do some filming, do some spearing, a uh, little bit of angling this week. And yeah, we, uh, we'll get you into it right away here and show you what this week had in store. Got to get it past those little ones, though. That's the problem. Oh, now she's gonna hit it. There, she got it. That's a little better size sunfish. If we were really hungry, we'd keep a keep a few of them to eat. But we're looking for a northern, so we'll let that one go. Nice fish, though. Well, there, with that, I'm on the board for the year, finally. And our regulations are we can have one between 22 and 26, and one over or we can have two over 26. So let's put the tape on this one and see what she measures. I think she's, by the looks of it, she's probably a little over 26, I'm thinking. So we'll put her to the edge here, so right there. And yeah, she's like 20, 26 and a half, 26 and three quarters. Let me double check here. Yep. Like 26 and a half. That one we gotta get super technical with because she's definitely over the slot. Let's go from above just to make sure. Oh yeah. Yep. Put her down to there. And yeah. We'll call her 26 and 5 A's. Very nice fish. Exactly what the Minnesota DNR wants you to have. They're the ones that are over the slot, and we're happy to have it because we're gonna eat good. We need one more. Look at that sucker. Oh, he's taking off with a spear. Oh, that's a big one. That is a big one. Oh, God, he's got a mouthful. Crap that we want to leave in the lake. <laughs> Right. 
right at about 31 and 3 a's. 31 and 3 a's. So yeah, another nice fish. So those are two pretty nice fish. Uh, we're not going to talk too loud because there's several people out here and you'd have them sitting on top of you if you say anything a little loud in the winter time. So we're going to pack up. We got our two. We're going to get out of here. I'm going to head back to my house and we're going to do a little tutorial on how to remove the wide bones from these fish. They're, in, in my opinion, these are the best eating fish there are. So, and maybe it's just because of how my wife cooks them because she is an amazing cook, but we're going to, we're going to show you how to take the wide bones out. And then if we're lucky, Kathy might show us how she cooks them. She might, she might keep a few secrets, but she'll show them how, she'll show us how we, she cooks them and Heck, I might show you how I eat them, and that's not going to take very long. We made it home, and if you look outside, Merry Christmas. It is finally snowing, and don't get me wrong, I love snow. I absolutely love snow. Uh, it's going to make it a little harder to get the fish out from now on, but I don't think it's going to stick around very long by the sounds of the temps. But we got a couple of really nice northerns today, and I'm gonna show you guys how to enjoy eating northern pike without putting up with all the bones. So we're, normally I'd clean these fish on our amazing uh, mudroom cleaning table slash, uh, yeah, we, my wife gets mad at me for cleaning in there, but it works out really great. But the lighting is not that great in there, so we're gonna go into my shop and we're gonna clean them in there, so. Come on with and let's get it done. So the shop is an absolute mess, but we've still got some of the stuff set up from Devin shooting his deer this past week. And we're gonna utilize that. The cleaning table's out here. We've got the hose out here with the spigot on it so we can wash everything up when we're done. And then after we're done cleaning stuff up, Kathy's going to show us how to cook stuff up. The first pro tip I'm gonna give you before anything is to make sure you put uh, latex gloves on. It's going to aid in not you not getting a pile of slime on your fingers, and when you're done, you can actually take it off and not get all that slime on the meat when you put it in the bowl. So uh, put these on before you get started. The, the next thing is make sure you got a very sharp knife there's so many knife sharpeners out there. Um, I'm not even gonna tell you which one to get, but just make sure it's a good brand. Make sure your knife is sharp before you start. So as the day went, we got two really nice Northerns. One almost 27 and one almost 32. So here is how I choose to debone a northern there's there's a couple different ways some some people call it the uh the uh five finger or the, or the five fish fillet and i don't do that one i actually take both sides off and i'll actually take the y bones out the way i'm about to show you so check this out so go down both sides And then you want to find where the backbone is for sure and stay on the side of the fish that you're on. And sometimes in spearing a pike you get a couple of a uh, couple of cuts you don't actually want to have in there, but that's just part of it. So there's one side, and there's the other side. And here is a really helpful tip: if you've got a son that is old enough to hold the gut bag, you make him stand in the background and come in <laughs> when you need him. So. Yeah, that's Devin. So that's the part that goes in the bag. 
One thing I really like to do before I get into actually deboning them is resharpen my knife. Okay, so here's the first fillet. We just sharpened our knife. There is a Y bone that runs through this part and you can feel the top part of that if you run your finger across it and you wanna come just to the upper side of that and go all the way across. And then once you've got that cut, I'll flip mine around a few times depending on which piece I'm actually, which side of the fish I'm actually filleting. But you can hear it going over the bones as you're filleting that. And then you'll come across the bottom side. So basically there is a, there's a line that runs through the center of the fish and just underneath that is where you're gonna wanna cut for the bottom side of that Y bone. Now keep in mind, I haven't cleaned a fish since February and it is now December. So I might not be perfect at this, but I really wanted to show you guys how this is done. So that is the piece in there that you're gonna take out and that's where all the bones are, okay? So we'll go along the back here and lay this out and then I'll show you that piece. Okay. So when we're done, we have three pieces. Here's the main part of the meat. Here is that top section. And this is what comes out and this is where all the bones are. And typically, we would take this and put this in a pickle jar because all of these bones will dissolve with vinegar and the likes of whatever my darling wife puts in there and a lot of other people put in there. But that makes for a great pickled fish and stay, it always stays firm. Um, it has the bones in, they dissolve, but it keeps it a little firmer than the rest of the meat. So we're gonna take, we're gonna take and put that in the pickle pail. Uh, the rest of this is definitely going in the frying pan. So let's try the other one and we'll see what we come up with. Okay, so here is the other side of that first fish. And again, we'll come right down on the upper side of that Y bone and then turn our knife sideways so that you can follow that, that Y bone right down. And you'll be able to hear it on your knife. If you're, if you're hitting it properly, it'll basically make a ticking sound the entire way down. And then on the bottom side, you won't have that until you get through the first portion of the Y bone and turn your knife up because it, it's called a Y bone because it makes a Y and you won't, you won't hear that at first on that bottom side. But once you get through and turn it up, you definitely will. And that's the piece that comes out of there. This one looked a lot better than the last one I did. Uh, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit rusty at it. Like I said, it's been since February last year since I did one. But uh, that is the piece that comes out of there. That is not a waste of meat. That is a delicious piece of meat in the pickle pail. So if, uh, if you only get a few fish a year, this is something you definitely want to save and look up uh, pickled fish recipes. That's going to go in there and go in there good. So we've got the bones cut out of it. Now, we have to take the boneless meat out of there. 
that's it. That's the, uh, that's the whole thing right there. And that is a very delicious piece of meat. We'll show you later how good these are. My wife, Kathy, is amazing at cooking. She's the reason I look the way I do, a little bit uh, larger than I probably should be, but she makes an impressive Northern Pike and that's what this is gonna go towards. So stick with us. Well, Kathy got into the frying before I got any chance to get any video of her and the awesome cooking. And at that point, I was too hungry to record me eating them. So we're gonna save that for another show. Uh, she, like I said, she's a very amazing cook and makes some, makes some really good food. So we'll show you that on another show, but I hope you love the clip of how to clean a Northern Pike and get all those pesky Y bones out. It makes for eating them so much easier for everybody. So make sure you, make sure you uh, take care of those Y bones and enjoy those Northern Pike. The following day, Matt was back from flying around the country and we headed out and had a, had a good time. Um, we got some fish, really made fun of Matt a couple times, he takes it well. Uh, but, uh, but had a good time, so check this out. It is the first week in December and it feels like the first week in October. It's like almost 50 degrees out today. The snow that we got two days ago has all gone, except what's on the lake. And the stuff that's on the lake is turning into slush rapidly. So uh, shouldn't, need, shouldn't need a heater too much today, but we're gonna head back out to Matt's house. Matt is ahead of us. He's got everything set up ready and see if the action is gonna continue. We've only got about two hours here to try to get something done. But hey, it's a heck of a nice day and especially a nice day to be on the ice and not freeze. So let's go give it a shot. Back in the stabbing cabin with Matt. It's gonna be another good day. Think so? I think so. Can only try. God, that hole just keeps getting cleaner and cleaner. It is. What do you think, you want a spirit? I'd say we'll let him swim for another day, huh? I, I think, I agree. Very nice fish. Oh, very spooky fish. He got scared of his little brother. I'll come back. I'll come back. See if it's skittish this time. Well, they're probably five pounder, I suppose. So he's coming to his little brother. That's a northern decoy down there. And uh, obviously he's a northern pike, so yeah, he's- uh, He's thinking if he wants to eat it. Yep, he's thinking about being a cannibal. Sometimes you jig them. Mm -hmm. You induce that uh, strike mode. Not today. Well, you went out, typically they'll turn around and come back when, you, when they do that, but. He doesn't look like he's coming back. There's a good one. That's a nice fish. Ready? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's pretty heavy. I don't know. I'd say you missed him. Dude, how in the <laughs> f did I miss that thing? He turned when you threw. Why am I, why are they jumping my spear? I don't know. What am I doing wrong? Wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh, you gotta be quicker than that. <laughs> what happened, Matt? <laughs> that was a gimme. That was a gimme. That was a gimme. Uh, yeah, that sucker was quick. We don't normally see a, a fish jump like that in... I mean, we're only that was in a gimme. Six, six, seven feet of water. Hmm. Wow. Well, I'm, not, I'm not happy with myself. I, I won't pick on him, though. There Never goes won't. dinner. I won't pick on him. <laughs> oh, you know he fing wants to nibble it. Oh, that's a dead pike. That's a dead pike. Oh, that's a lot of fing dirt, but it was time to go anyway. Alright, you better get here because we're going in with 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 uh limit of pike today. Yep. 
That's today's limit. About a 30 this morning. This one uh, might be close to a slot fish, but we get the one one whoopsies and we're gonna go eat fish tonight again. Heck yeah! Good eater. Really good. That'll feed a couple people. Yeah, good eater. Beautiful day. I think yeah. We're pushing 50 degrees right now. You can see the chisel is just about to fall through the ice there, and so is the fish house. We got a nice pond around it, nice moat, and yeah, it's melting. I'm out here in a t-shirt. It's melt bad. We're gonna have to. Uh, we'll be moving the uh, fish house tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be even warmer tomorrow, so. But nice, nice, nice fish. Good eater. Yeah. Good eater. That's what we call them. Good eaters. So. They all eat good. All right. Not a better, uh, not a better fish to eat in the winter than northern pike. So we're done spearing for the day, but apparently Matt didn't have enough fun yet because he's headed back out to the fish house. Knucklehead forgot his phone. So that was all we got to do for spearing wise for the second week in December. But I want you to remember this clip where I said we might have to take the fish house off the lake. You can see the chisel is just about to fall through the ice there, and so is the fish house. We've got a nice pond around it, nice moat, and yeah, it's melting. I'm out here in a t-shirt. It's melting bad. We're going to have to uh, take the fish house tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be even warmer tomorrow, so. So you're going to be seeing something a little interesting on next week's show regarding that clip and what was said there. So, hey, I want to thank you for watching Outdoors America Ice Fishing Edition, and we'll see you next week.